And it, that just means um, fruit, no, not fruit. What do we call this? It's fruit. It's mulberry. 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 Yeah? Because it looks like a little berry. It has this barrier here. And this means that it divides, but it doesn't grow. It's just break, it's just, it's really the male principle breaking it up into pieces. And the female principle is just strongly protecting this. There's really no connection to the mother at all. Because nothing can get in here. So it can't be nurtured either, it can't grow, it's not really alive, it's still in this state of almost alive. And then, like I said, it concentrates the cells in one area here, and it has an empty space here, and it floats into the uterus and it begins to attach, because this shell begins to come apart, it begins to dissolve. The two things happen. These, this, this outside, which is called the chorion. This, this is the wall, chorion. Well, the, the, the wall dissolves. The wall is called the zona pellucida. But the, the chorion are the cells that, that migrate here, give the outside barrier. And this space in the middle is called the yolk. And what happens also, another, another area, free, begins to develop here. So that's called the amnion. There's just some cells here. Just these cells here are going to become the human being. All of this is, is comes out of the periphery, out of the, the egg, and become, it's going to make an area for the child to develop. And these areas, so you have, especially these, they form, and here you have the villi. And so the, you might say that the, it's not the child, because the child is, the child is just here. Yeah? But this, this godparents of the child, yeah, this, this form of the egg, which is the child is just beginning to grow in the middle, but you have this external part. External. Well, you could say the higher, Rudolf Steiner says the higher layers of the human being, so here, here you have the physical body. Yeah, and here you have the ether body. And here you have the, the eye. And a little bit later there, there's another one called the allantois, which will develop here. It doesn't develop quite yet. That will be where the astral body will be especially working. But this, is, this is really a, a, an organ of the higher human being. Because these have already been formed in the spiritual world. Yeah. And about the 17th to the 21st day, they will, they, will, they will concentrate into this area here where the child will grow. This, what I'm saying is this is really an organ of the higher human being which will build its own body. So your eye and even your physical body is just this fluid here which will be um, nutrient, yeah. and this, this area here, because this is going to turn, this will eventually become the amnionic sac, which will be like an inner seam with the, it, where the etheric the is all around the child, protecting the child. It's, it's this it's amnion. amnion. Yeah. And what's interesting here is, here it's completely uh, closed on its own, and now something comes out of this higher human being and attaches to the mother. So it's not the child yet. The child is still the child is just just like a leaf. Just like a just like a um, well, it's, it's just just like a and because this is all movement and fluid, it's just like a resting area here. 
it's going to develop. So it's the outer human being that's grabbing a hold of the mother, the higher human being. Just, the child is just like a plane, just like a leaf waiting to. It's, it's really at the life stage now. And this higher, so this chorion, which Middle Center says the eye is working in this, this begins to develop these villi which which go which go into and pull into the mother's uterus. But the villi belongs to mother, is it? No, the, the villi belong here, but this is the next thing. This is met by the mother, okay? The mother starts to develop the placenta here. It's a part of the chorion, which is a, it's not the child. It's, it's, it's the mother it's and the higher being are working together to start to build the child. Yeah, and then this, so I'm going to take this away now. All right, so this, we're going to follow this through. So the, this keeps developing and then, so you have more of this as, as it comes into the mother, these villi develop more and more out of the chorion, the, the chorion, and the placenta develops in the mother. Because the placenta is between the mother and the child, and it's going to nurture the child inside. And this begins to develop here, and this turns. So here's the developing child here. And so this, this now is the the egg still, and uh, the um, the child will develop in here, and this begins this begins to to separate here, so that you have an outer chorion here, and and now you have space here with fluid, and this is connected here. This will become the umbilical cord here, and then finally it's completely in the uterus, and the the center is all around. So these are this is these are cells. They're active. They're they're from the mother becoming the mother's body is be, is feeding the the chorion, which is able to sustain the child. And here the allotolus develops here. You know, this is the, so here you have the chorion, the center, the yolk sac, and the amnion, and here you have, it's like a leaf now, and it has, it begins to have two layers of cell, and now it's, be, it's beginning to grow, yeah, you have real growth, growth here, this is differentiating out more like this, this is inner, these are all cells. This is the in. This is where the the amnion is and the yolk sac, and this is going to be an area outside. This will be. This will get bigger and bigger, and this will be the pregnant mother. And this, the amnion choice begins to develop here because now there's there's the blood from the mother blood from the mother is able, there's a, the, the placenta has a barrier here, so that the mother's blood and the child's blood doesn't mix, and it has to be able to, you have to be able to take the nutrients out, because cells are growing and cells are dying, so you have to be able to have, take excretion away, and that's what the other yeah. This is the cord. No, that's the... The, it's part of the cord in the beginning. It will disappear because the placenta takes the work away. But this, here's the, um, what do we call the cord again? The, the umbilical cord. Okay, now you can see there's a very important principle here called recapitulation. So the, the, the macrocosmic is recapitulated always in the microcosmic. So the, the the child the child is a space that you might say the cosmos through the mother 
the whole cosmos is working into this creation. And tajini recapitulates the logini. Yeah? That means the being recapitulates all being. So here you have almost the stone, yeah? the, the hard, the, the protected. It's not alive really yet. It's more like the mineral world. Yeah, like, like a seed is the most mineral. So you can say, creation goes first through the mineral level, and then it comes to the plant level. It begins to be alive, and it has this leaf, and it even looks like, you know, in the plant, when you have the germinating seed, the roots come out here. Alright, so then you have, you have these first two little cotyledon leaves. Here the seed is breaking apart, and the plant has these two little, little leaves. So here the plant, you have a, like a leaf form, and here's the sun. The sun all around the mother and the higher eye of the child are forming the sun around the, the growing leaf of the child. So now we will have to go to the animal phase. Okay, now I'm going to need my book for this one. So, now, there's no inwardness here. The, the astral part is very, very small. In the, in the animal world, especially in the birds, this is much more important, this, this, yeah? But in the human being, most of this activity, this goes away very quickly, and all this activity of, of respiration and uh, excretion is taken on by the placenta. But since in the bird, this is this is very important, the alentos, and very active, yeah. In the bird. Bird and embryo. In a little baby bird or in big bird. In the in the in the in the egg. In the egg. Yeah, in the it's very important in the bird because these are are not part of the bird. These are outside organs. Of the, you might say the animal organ outside, not yet the bird. And because in a, in a chicken egg, for instance, this, this is an actual, the chicken's egg is outside, there's no placenta. So this is inside the shell. So this is an actual shell in the bird, yeah? or in the snake. So the, the, the bird, or the snake, or the reptile inside has to breathe through the shell. Because the shell is actually like a lung, it breathes. When I was young, I sailed across the Pacific in a little boat. And we had to take all of our food because we were, we were five weeks at sea. Yeah? So, and we would take eggs to cook. And my captain showed me you put uh, Vaseline cream all around the egg and then it won't go bad. Because if you don't, it still is breathing and then it's, uh, it's deteriorating. Yeah. It's very porous, and we closed all the pores with the, with the gel. Yeah. Because with the egg, it's the bird or the snake or the, yeah, the reptile is actually breathing because it's not inside the mother, it's in, a, in an egg. Yeah. And Alan Toyos is doing that for the, for, the, for the being that's in an egg. Yeah. Uh, helping them to breathe. It's, it's yeah. actually like, it's performing, it's bringing in that oxygen and putting it, it's like lung. It's also like kidney, because it takes the waste in the growing embryo out and diffuses it outside the egg. And have you ever wondered, you have an egg, you can eat the bird inside, but there are no bones. But when the bird comes out of the egg, it's, it's got a skeleton, it's got bones inside. Where did the bones, where did the, the um, <laughs> the material for the bones right. is called the calcium. Where did the calcium come from from the bones? In the beginning, the egg is very hard, very, very compact and hard. The little bird couldn't get out of the egg. It's too hard. It was even strong enough to try to get out, but it's not strong enough yet. But when the bird gets strong enough, and that means it has its uh, muscles, attached to its bones, and then it can break out from inside the egg. The egg is already quite thin because 
the alentose has slowly dissolved the calcium from the shell and brought it in to make the bones inside the chicken. And it's beak. That's the beak. How wonderful this is. When it gets strong enough, when it takes the substance out of the shell and puts it into itself, the shell gets thinner and more um, fragile, and it gets stronger, and then it can break out. Just another detail of how wise nature is, how always things are brought into harmony. But in mammals, the egg stays inside the mother for many, many, many months. Not always many. A mouse takes 21 days. Yes, 21 days. And an elephant takes 21 months. No? It's a good thing it's not the other way around. Or we would have elephants running all over the place. So in the mammals, this is not so important because the placenta does all this work. Okay, so. This is going to develop, this is going to get larger, and this is going to get smaller, and this is going to get bigger. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which one is going to get smaller? Okay, now let's, do, all right, we'll try to do this. So here, here, I'm going to look at this from the side. So this is like a leaf, yeah? connected to like a stem here. And at the leaf phase, there's only two, two layers of cells here. Yeah? But then something starts to happen. So this is sideways. And if you look at it this way, from above, it's like this. And this starts to have a little thing here, a little area. And these cells up above, up above here, yeah, so these are the cells, that, they start coming in. You start to have invagination. Yeah. This is very important. You don't have it in the plant, invagination. Everything is outside. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to go from the plant stage, we start to go to the animal stage of the embryo. All these cells are going to start going inside like that. Yeah, and at the same time, you begin to have a head area and a tail area. So this now begins to have three separate layers of cells. Yeah. We call this the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. So now you begin to have the threefold animal. I want to, this is so important that you see that all of this first starts outside. And everything that's outside and supporting this, step by step by step, will be pulled inside. So you have, you have this again, remember? So you have this again, that all this outside starts to come inside. So the macrocosm becomes the microcosm. Okay, so... And everything now, all the organs will develop from these three levels of cells. The, the nerve sense system, along with the skin, will all develop from this ectoderm. Yeah? The endoderm, because this, we'll, sh we'll show you, this is going to, this is going to ex turn like this, and everything outside is going to come inside. So here you're going to have the gut, you're going to have the whole alimentary canal, the, lu the uh, lungs, and all the inner organs are going to develop out of this endoderm. The intestines, yeah. And in the middle, you have the mesoderm. So here are all the bones, the muscles, the heart will develop out of the mesoderm. So, so here you have the threefold system. Okay, so here you have the nerve sense system. Here you have the limbic system. They'll all develop out of this for, the, for all the animals and for the human being. Any questions? If you have any questions, because this is complicated. Everything's happening at once. She has a question. Yeah. The top layer, the cells here, 
begin to go inside and form a, a layer with two. With these, these stay the same, and these cells on the outside, they fold in here, and they come inside. No, that's in, that's in a moment. This is first just forming the three layers. That's happening here. It's between the leaf and the animal stage. When it starts to form in, that's the invagination. But the invagination is already happening at the cellular level here, not the organ level. So these are the this is actual these are the, the ectoderm cells, and these are the endoderm cells. Yeah, I'll just do it like this. And these cells come in like that. So but this, you've got to think of it, you should, you should. <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I'm working with the doctors training in Dorno. And these are medical doctors and medical students who are learning anthroposophical medicine. We don't have time to do this. When they do this, they do all this themselves with clay. They model this with their hands, yeah? Yeah? This has, you can also get videos of this. But this shows them how to model this whole process. And if you've done this yourself, then you have a feeling for the, for the activity and the forces involved. All of this happens in the first week. And this happens in the second week. So within five days, all of this is coming about. All of this is happening simultaneously. So these, these cells from the outside, from up above, turn migrate and turn in and go inside and become these cells. So they're, they're coming in like this. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And these are very different cells. So the cells are now, they're, they're dividing and they're turning into new kinds of cells. You now have metamorphosis going on. Cells from the stem cells become actual dedicated to one activity or another. Okay, so this is this. So you've got you've got the the amnion up above here, and here you've got the yolk sac, yeah? Alright? And the alien toss. So where is this connected? It's connected still here. The alien toss is here. Alright, now Now, it, it starts, I'll just put it like this, it's, it's, it starts to go like this, and at the same time, so this is looking at it from the side, this is looking at it from the side, so here, here you have the amnion, and the, so you can see the yolk sac is going to get smaller, and this is going to get bigger, and this is going to start to curve this way, yeah, and, and and at the same time, so if you look at it this side, but if you look at it from above, so here's, here's the amnion here. This is, so the yolk sac is getting smaller, this is getting bigger, and this, this is, this is, this is curving like this, and it's curving like this at the same time. Yeah, and it's eventually going to, this is going to curve all the way around, and this is going to curve all the way around. All right, so you have the alientos, uh, the, the amnion here. And now, this, the, the spinal cord starts to separate off from this, so now it becomes separate here inside. So this this first starts to invaginate, and then it closes over, and here you have the spinal cord. So this is to the nerve cord, and then this this closes off. So it would be like this. So this perspective is working from the head. Looking from the head, and so you have the right side and the left side. And the tail is in the left. Yeah, the tail is back that way. So that's looking this way. And this will eventually be the gut, then. So you have the spinal cord and the alimentary canal. 
going, going this way through it now. Because it's going, it's going around. It's, it's, it's complicated. Because it's, it's invaginating here and it's invaginating here. It's making this, the spinal cord, up above. So the back is invaginating and the gut is invaginating to make it the gut. Now. Until it, it will get separated off. So we're looking at it. We're looking at it this way, oh, but this is this is curved this way because this will this at this level you begin to get the head and the tail, you know? and the and the heart is here. The heart will develop here and here. It's actually more like this. And here you have the folds, which will become the face and the nose. Yeah? And here you have the heart, and here you have the umbilical cord. Yeah? So the whole yolk sac has disappeared into the umbilical cord. This is connected to the mother, and then the whole child is in the womb. Yeah. Do you follow this? It's an amazing process. You really need to, to do it with your hands in play. Yeah. This is happening in the third week. <coughs> this is happening in the second week. And then from the fourth week on, this will be the this will now develop as an embryo. This is still what we call zygote. Yeah? This is the pre-embryonic. And now you begin to have an embryo. And here you have the little buds, which will, remember I said you have invagination and budding. So you have budding coming out, and while invagination is bringing things in, things are pushing out of the body. Now, all animals, uh, from uh, reptiles to mammals to man, they go through this. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not a very good drawer, so I'm not, I'm not going to draw this. But you could see, these are, this is a crocodile, this is a chicken, this is like a monkey, and this is a human being. So they all, they all go through this, this form. Yes. And each one, so the, you might say, the human being goes through the stone, the plant, and then the, the frog, the polywalk stage, yeah? And then the reptile, and then the mammal, until it gets to the human stage. So it recapitulates. So when you get to the fifth, after the fifth week, yeah? This begins to now be an embryo, and now you have all the organs begin to develop. The first organ, well actually the first organ is the is the nervous system, yeah, because you have the, the, the spine, start the spinal cord, yeah, and because you will form the bone bones around that. Yeah. Already here you begin to have these bones that are going to be the spinal, uh, the, the vertebrae, and the cord is already inside here, yeah, and also the alimentary canal is already in this is all closed off, but inside is already the spinal cord and the alimentary canal and the, uh, the internal coming, coming from the endoderm and this is from the ectoderm. But the heart is outside the body still. But what will be the heart? We'll talk about this tomorrow because this is an amazing development. We first have the blood and we first have the circulation and the veins and the, before the heart. Because the blood is coming in through the umbilical cord, starting, flowing in, starting to make this whole structure that will be a heart and all the circulatory system. And I'll, t tomorrow I'll tell you, this, this is for instance, this starts at 21 days. So they, they give a list here of when the organs just begin. Yeah. So here you have already so 21 days through the, four, the fourth week, the heart is beginning to develop. <laughs> it's not easy to follow a creative process. And you know, many people would think, oh, you have an egg and it starts to divide into little cells, and those little cells become the head, and then they become this. And, yeah? they, I thought, yeah, the little, little bean starts to develop out of that egg. But first, you have all the, the higher human being, all the organs for making the body first develop, and the body develops afterwards. And also, this is all fluid. This is all fluid. It's, you know, the blood is made out of cells. So cells don't have to be hard, uh, solid things. This is, this is a tissue which is flowing all the time. This is all happening at once, and it's all in fluid flow. The fluid 
everything is really fluid or viscous. Yeah? We'll talk. We'll start with this tomorrow. Let's talk about this dynamic that's going on here. Okay. Thank you.